Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing today? I hope you guys are doing good. Welcome back to the makeup chair. Today, I'm going to recreate the look that I was wearing in my most recent Friday favorites. And this was requested by Rhea. She wanted to see this look, so I hope that she enjoys it. And I hope everybody else who watches it enjoys it. And let's get started. I'm hoping the makeup will wake me up because I look very tired and I feel very tired right now. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off this look with the eyes. Now I ran out of my favorite eyeshadow primer, so I actually had to mix whatever was left in the tube with a little bit of my concealer. And I'm going to make adjustments for this, but you don't necessarily have to do that if you're just using an eyeshadow primer as is. But I'm applying the eyeshadow primer plus concealer with a small flat brush, and I'm applying this all over the lid and bringing it right up to the brows as well. This is going to work as a blank canvas for us to work on, and it's also going to create a little bit more brightness and help our eyeshadows to last longer as well. Once I apply it, I then like to take a damp sponge and just tap this all over the lid. This is for a few different reasons. One, it kind of blends out everything and makes sure it's a nice even base, but it also feels really good if you're really tired. That kind of damp, cold sponge, it just feels really refreshing. The eyeshadow palette that we're using today is by Up Cosmetics, and I'm going to start off with a blending brush and the lightest shade in this palette. Now, this is the adjustment that I'm talking about. And this is going to do a couple of different things. It's going to create a nice bright effect on the lid, so our eyeshadows are really going to stand out. But it's also going to set that little bit of concealer that I had to mix with my primer. Concealers aren't great for the lids because they can kind of crease up and you can get like little lines, which you can see I already start having here. So if you apply that lighter shade, it's going to make sure we set that in place and it's not going to affect the rest of the shadows that we're going to apply. It's also a great little tip for beginners because it will help with your other blending as you have a powder base to start with. So everything that goes on top is going to blend much easier. The next shade that we're going to take is our mid-tone shade, the most important shade. We're going to apply this really tight on that outer edge with that blending brush into the crease of the eye and then down onto the lid. You should always choose a shade that's at least one shade darker than your skin tone and also has a matte finish. We don't want anything too shimmery this high up on the lid. We also don't want anything too dark either. So blend it into the crease and then bring it down. This is kind of like contouring and shaping the eye and adding a little bit of depth as well. Take your time with this, get a really nice blend, and then we can move on to our next shadow. So we're moving on to the darker shade in the palette. This is sort of like an aubergine-y sort of a brown. And we're using a pencil brush this time. So I'm taking my brush in more of a horizontal motion, working across the lash line, and then bringing it more vertical when I want to softly blend this up and blur this up. But you still want to keep it to the lower part of the lid. To blend that out, I'm just going to take a touch of this shadow with that blending brush and blur the two together. So blur what's on the lid and also that darker aubergine shade. The next shadow I'm going to take is this beautiful bronzy shade. I'm just going to apply this to my fingertips. I was going to use a brush, but the fingertips work great. It's so perfect for this time of year because it still has that warmth of like late summer, but it's just coming into that kind of autumn-y feel. I just, I love this shade. And then I like to very softly go over the top of it with my blending brush and just look at that. Look at how glossy that looks. I love it. I'm also going to line with a little bit of liner. This is totally optional. It's just something I like to do just to deepen my lash line. And we're going to move on to mascara. The mascara that I'm using today is the Benefit Their Real Mascara. What I like to do is I like to push it right into the roots and sort of push against it and kind of close my eyes into it and then do like a little wiggle and bring it out. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but I promise you like doing that little wiggle, it coats all of the lashes. And then I do the same at the bottom as well. I did my brows and applied some falsies just off camera, but I will link in the description box what I used. So moving on to the face, we have our wet ingredients and then we have our dry ones in a second. But starting off with our wet ingredients, we have our primer, foundation, concealer, and I'm using a stick foundation for a kind of a bronzy contour. So I'm using a shade that's at least one shade darker than my skin tone that's a little on the cooler side as well. We'll get to that in a second. So I've already primed my face. I'm going to take my concealer to start with. I know everyone has their kind of different opinion on this, but I like to use my concealer first. I like to use a brush and my sponge to add a little bit of the coverage that I need where I need it. And then I can work on the coverage with my foundation later. 
Now, before I put on my liquid foundation, I'm going to use my cream foundation first. So this is a foundation stick. It's a little heavier. It's a little creamier. And the reason I'm applying this first is because it's heavier and denser. So when I apply my liquid foundation and blend it together, it's still going to hold its position because it's heavier than the foundation. Does that make sense? Because you have the cream and then you have the liquid, the liquid is going to blend and move more and the cream is going to stay where I need it to stay. It also depends on how strong you want the contour to be, but I really just want it to be more subtle. So I'm just working around the edge of my face and also around my lips as well. I'm not going to blend that in. I'm going to go straight in with my foundation and we're just going to dot this around the face. And then I'm going to take my sponge and softly blend everything together. Again, the cream foundation won't move too much. And the liquid foundation will just blend kind of around it and with it. Gives you a much more of a natural finish. Now for our dry ingredients, we have our bronzer and our highlighter. I'm going to start off with the bronzer shade and I'm just going to take my brush and work all around the areas that I applied the cream. So I'm not going to set my entire face. I kind of want it to look a little dewy, but when it comes to creams, a little bit of powder goes a long way. So a bit of that bronzer will help to deepen that kind of contoured shaping effect while also setting the cream foundation in place. Now I'm going to flip my brush over to the other side. I love this brush. It's double ended. Seriously, you need it. And I'm going to now apply my highlighter shade. So this is the Dandelion Twinkle by Benefit. And I love how glowy this makes my skin. It doesn't look highlighted. It looks glowy. I love it. Sticking with that same side of the brush, I'm then going to take my Pillow Talk Blush by Charlotte Tilbury and just apply this on the cheeks. Set everything in place with a little bit of setting spray and we're going to move on to the lips. So I'm going to use something a little strange for my lips. I'm going to use the Benefit Brow Contour Pro. So this is very similar to those pens that you had when you were a kid. There are two dark shades and two light shades and I'm going to use it on my lips. Brow pencils and lip pencils are fairly similar, so you can kind of get away with interchanging them. And this is perfect for this technique that I'm going to show you. You need a light and a dark. So everybody has a clear lip line and then has like a colored lip line. So if you want to overline your lips, a nice little technique to do is to darken your lighter one. So darken that lighter rim around your lips and this kind of adds more volume. And then go in with a lighter shade and go around that to create the illusion of you still having that clear lip line. Does that make sense? It's a technique that I'm still sort of working on and still kind of changing around a little bit, but it creates the illusion of a slightly fuller lip because you're going to darken your lighter one and then create the illusion of a lighter one still being there and just blend it all together. Now I did mess up my cupid's bow a little bit. Again, I'm still working on this technique, but it's all about kind of trial and error when it comes to your lip shaping. I'm then going to go in with a matte lipstick and you might be like, okay, but why even darken it if you're going to cover it? Well, that depth is still going to show through slightly underneath and it also works as a great base for the lipstick to sit on top of. So you're going to keep that fullness even with your lipstick. And I also went in with my favorite kind of sheer liquid lipstick. I love this one by L'Oreal and I just kind of mostly focus this on the center of the lips. And there you go, you have a slightly fuller lip line. So that is the makeup done. Now for the fun bit, I'm gonna put on my hoops. I instantly feel different when I put my hoops on. I feel like, I feel like a, I don't know, a more fun person. <laughs> So I'm going to put my hoops on and then I just do a little ponytail because I know that Rhea asked to see like how I did my hair. All I do is I do like a little ponytail at the top, just a, just a little one. And then I back comb my fringe just that little bit as well. My hair is not as good as it was in the other video. And I, I think it's because I took my rollers out too quickly. So it doesn't have the air in there, but it's basically just like a, a little, a little ponytail at the top and then you can kind of pin the sides up if you want to as well just to kind of add to it but yeah that is the finished makeup look i really hope that ria enjoyed it and that everybody else who watched enjoyed it and if you have any more requests definitely let me know and i will see you in the next one